Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I'm back here at the ISS going to try to land Space Shuttle Atlantis once again. The first time I tried it, uh, it didn't work out too well. If you missed that video, you might want to go back and check it out. So we're going to jump in and just get going right away. Bring up Base Sync, Target, Cape, Canaveral. And this time I'm actually going to go ahead and go with this fourth orbit rather than going around to 165 because I'm going to uh, leave much earlier. I'm going to give myself a full orbit this time, one entire orbit, to see if that's enough to slow things down. Go ahead and warp time ahead, get over to that point. And it's going to be right... Right there. So we're going to undock. Undocking confirmed. And let's see how we are. Go ahead and warp time ahead just a little. Okay, to close things up. And we're just going to go straight to the retrograde position. No target, and we're going to bring our periapsis down. This time I'm only going to bring it down to about 40 kilometers because we're going to try to go... because we're going to go around the whole planet. Okay, it looks like I can start the deorbit now. You would n never, I'm guessing you would never want to do it this close to the ISS, but I'm not going to worry about Rotation. such details. Rotation. Again, I'm going to rotate up 15 degrees. And again, that's because the Ohm's engines are tilted. 15 degrees, so we need that green crosshair to be pitched. And we're going to warp time ahead. And I'm not worried about the fact that my cross range is increasing. Or I should say that my distance off base is increasing. I'll correct it on the way down. And like I said, this time we're just going to go 40 kilometers. Right about there. Okay, we're done. Prograde, and then we warp time ahead to entry interface. Put that on one orbit. So this time, instead of having, I guess, what was it, a quarter of an orbit to get slowed down, this time we've got more than a half, so probably 70%, maybe 60%. And I know I'm targeting Cape Canaveral, but for some reason I hate when it switches over to, say, target surface. Now it's showing that in order to get closer to the base, we want our alignment, uh, we want to be rolled the other way. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is roll over.
I'm going to put in full up elevator. And now I'm going to bring up arrow brake. Target cape. Can I roll? One of these days I need to learn how to read these other screens. The only thing I ever use arrow brake for is this screen, but I'm pretty sure this stuff is useful too. And we're going to want surface. Off. Okay, now we're just using surface controls. And same thing as I did in the other example. I'm going to actually first of all let me kill rotate until I get oriented how I want to be. So I'm watching my vertical speed, it's currently negative 127, but my vertical acceleration is a positive number, so my vertical speed is getting closer to zero, although it is getting there slowly. And I just want to get down to, you know, maybe 60-something uh, kilometers, and then just fly a gradual descent down through the atmosphere so that hopefully I can uh, slow things down. And our distance off base is coming down, but let me add in some more angle of attack. Speed that up a little bit just to get that process over with. And like I said at the beginning of the other Atlantis landing video, I don't know how to do this. This is purely trial and error. So I'm going to be listing these videos as learn with me videos. And my thought process is that I want to get my vertical speed down to a point where I can then maintain an altitude in the 60 kilometer range, but then just slowly descend down through the atmosphere at a constant vertical speed of maybe, you know, 50 meters per second or something like that. The, the idea there, my thought process, is that that will let me get through the the real hard deceleration point. Because again, we don't have the advantage of being able to hold an angle of attack like you can in the you know XR2. So we're getting down to about 63 kilometers, and our vertical speed is 23. I think I could probably maybe roll to the right a little bit and let the vertical speed 
get a little higher, as in, you know, negative 30, something like that. I'm just watching the distance off base. It's currently 200 kilometers. That's not going to be an issue. We've got lots of time to get that. See if I can get a better camera angle outside. <coughs> so you can see here we don't have any atmospheric effects. At least the orbiter is not showing any. And that's kind of what we need because we don't have good use of the uh, bottom of the shuttle. the part of the vessel that's hitting the atmosphere right now you know we're getting a lot of you know this part the, no the nose and I would say even you know possibly even the windshield now I'm starting to see a little bit of atmospheric effects my vertical speed suddenly is not where I want it so let me roll out a little bit I can't fly from the outside, I've got to be inside. I'm just going to climb a little bit, I think 60, 61, 62 kilometers is a better place to be. the other way. Or go level something. So we don't want our distance off base to necessarily go really far in the other direction. Okay, we're already down to 6,000 900 meters a second, so we've lost a substantial amount of energy already. Let's make sure we don't lose too much, because we need to get over to the base. And we're already hurting for energy, I may have overdone it. But it looks like this method will work having one full one full uh, cycle one full revolution maybe Actually, I didn't mean to climb this much. No, we're just going to glide.
rotation. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep myself over here toward the base according to arrow break, which is pretty difficult to do because there's no you know, there's no good autopilot to hold like there is with the XR2. But it does look like we've got enough energy to get over there. There's a calculation that you can do. There's a guy that does uh, some really good YouTube videos. I'll put a link in the description down below. His name, uh, the, his name's Terry Wilson, and his YouTube name is Featherwing Love. Whenever he does his uh, landings manually in a vessel like the standard Delta Glider that doesn't have these autopilots, he does a range calculation, and I don't actually know what that calculation is. I'd have to look it up. But with that range calculation, you don't have to guess if you'll have enough energy to get where you're trying to go or not. You know for sure because you've got the calculation. Alright, now I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance. I'm going to bring up Calm nav. And put in the information for the trans for the range beacon. And I don't know that I'll use it, but if any vessel would need, can make use of this MFD, then it would be this one. And we're going to want the longer runway, 3315, so we're going to go... Looks like by the time we get there, we're going to be going out of the south toward the north, so 33. So we want... Uh, One thirty four twenty. Okay, should have that set. Whenever I land the XR two, I just do it visually. I don't use the HSI. Whenever I use uh, like Microsoft Flight Slim Flight Simulator, I do use these types of MFDs more. But in Orbiter, I one of the reasons I don't like this MFD in Orbiter is because the range is fairly short, and you're going so fast that by the time you're in range of the HSI, you know it, it almost doesn't do you any good. That is if you land the way I land. I'm going to bring back up base sync just so we can watch the uh, distance off base here. And what do I need to be doing? Do I need to be going left or right? Okay, so we're coming down through the atmosphere again. We've got a vertical speed of negative 91. I'm thinking maybe one full orbit might be a little too much. Well, on the other hand, if I hadn't lost so much energy there when I wasn't paying attention, we'd be in better shape right now. switch back over to surface controls 
atmosphere controls. Yeah, I'm getting pretty worried now that I'm not going to have the energy to get over there. Brick's still showing me coming through, so hopefully. Trying to bring the distance off base down again. I didn't get my goal of maintaining a constant vertical speed, that's for sure. I'm definitely bubbling up and down, but I don't think it's, you know, that big of a deal. Heat is more of a concern and we're staying cool. <coughs> I do need to switch back okay. over to RCS though because I'm high up enough that the atmosphere controls are really sloppy. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of rotate around and check my range against arrow break just to make sure that it's still showing that I'm coming through the yeah you can see that green line that waves through so I'll go back this way and work on my range my distance off base a little more down to 60 kilometers it says surface again, I hate that this MFD does that I know I targeted the base, I've done it <clears throat> like three times and it just keeps resetting and it says surface controls. Oh. 
So this definitely is not an exciting vessel to land. You know, with the XR2, you can have some pretty exciting landings by deorbiting just a couple thousand kilometers before you get to the base and then just hammering the vessel down into the atmosphere. Okay, we're getting a pretty high vertical speed here. It's straighten things out a bit. Check our range. Oh boy, that is close. Close to coming up short. Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't think I've got enough energy to get all the way to the base. I really feel like I would have if I hadn't dipped so deep into the atmosphere at that one point when I wasn't paying attention. Let me check something though. What about Habana? Not a big difference, but it's a little closer. Looks like we might be able to make it to Havana. So let's set that as our new target. Even Havana is looking questionable. Rotation. Attitude off. Possibly be closer. Wide awake's closer. Hmm. Wonder if I can make that. Ugh. 
not with my trajectory being what it is. I highly doubt I can change that much now. No. I think if I were to, if I do this again, or I should say when I do this again, I think I'm going to go for, instead of one entire orbit, maybe like 80%. Because I think we can get a little bit more deceleration without running the risk of heating up the vessel too much. Because what we're seeing here, this is not much. And that's just a little bit of atmospheric effect. That's not very much heat, so there's nothing to worry about there. And our <clears throat> speeds come down quite a bit. We're almost 2,000 meters per second slower than when we started. Thirteen thousand kilometers to go. And the other thing about deorbiting a little bit later is that it wouldn't take as long if we can get as long as we can get away with it. I just don't think half works. It's too fast. You know, so I don't know where the magic number would be, 60%, 70%. But I think it's going to be more than half, but less than one full orbit. I know there's a base like over here. It's called Coora or something. Let's see if I can find that base, see if it's closer. Yeah, Core. Coro. It's not really that much closer. And I don't have a runway there. So we'll stick with Habana, Habana or Bust.
I am not a fan of these 90 minute landings. So the distance off base is getting very close to zero. This time I'm actually just going to go by the zero point and just let it keep going the other direction because every time I try to bank over toward the left to check my range and arrow break, then it sends my distance the other direction. So I'm just going to start. So here we are again dipping into the atmosphere a bit. Our vertical speed. I think that's probably the most heat we've generated so far. But I don't really think it's that much. I think it's less than 1G. I'm not going to have the energy to get to Havana either. Arg, this is going to be a total failure. It looks really close, but just isn't going to quite make it. Nevertheless, I'll see how far I can get. In fact, I think Aerobrake is telling me how much I'm going to miss it by. I just noticed something. Target, position, target, distance. I think this distance is how much I'm off by, and I'm 590 kilometers off. 600 and... So it's climbing...
Yeah, apparently arrow brake isn't reliable enough for for this. Not sure why that is. If it because a while ago, you know, it said that I had enough energy to get to Cape Canaveral, then got Havana, and now I'm not even making it making it to Havana, so I can't rely on that information to know if I'm going to get over there or not. That's interesting. Looks like I'm going to get more range with the angle of attack being about 15 degrees or so. If I let it drop, then I'm not getting as much range. Pretty tempted to abandon this attempt and just start over another time, taking what I've learned here and trying again later, but... I would like to see just exactly how far I'm going to make it, though. Control F2. See if I can get away with 2 or 3x is twice as fast as faster than 1x. Yeah, they're oscillating a lot. for now at least. I'm gonna bring up surface over here. I don't really need the other MFD anymore. Yeah, I guess I can go surface here. See if we can get away with some four times acceleration.
vertical speeds dropping, so go back to 1x for now. So we're slow enough now that don't really have to worry about atmosphere or like overheating. So the point there just being that we can we can definitely bring the shuttle down through the atmosphere without the heat becoming a problem. We just have to do it very gradually and just takes a while so you just have to be patient it's kind of boring actually but
didn't mean to do that. Five thousand four hundred kilometers yet to go. Boy, this takes a while. So yeah, one orbit is too much. It's that's just for one thing I'm not patient enough to do this ever again. And it's just uh, obviously we don't have the energy that we need to go around a whole orbit. So I'm going to say that the next time I do this, I'm going to try 75%, so one quarter orbit plus a half orbit, and hopefully that will strike a balance between getting where we need to go. without having to uh, overheat the vessel, overstress the vessel, and, and getting there within a reasonable amount of time. Take your eyes off the inside for one moment, and you're all over the place.
land time in 2,000, 100 seconds, holy cow. That's 10, 20, 30. Like, 35 minutes. Seriously, another 35 minutes of gliding? Alright, I'm gonna have to do some time warp or I'm never gonna have the patience to get through this. And we're, we slowed down enough that time warp should be relatively safe. Looks like we're going to be dumping in the ocean. I wonder what the contingency plan from NASA has for... for dumping in the ocean is. And it looks like we're going to come up about 2,000 kilometers short. Short of Havana, that is, let alone Cape Canaveral. But Cape Canaveral is not all that far from Havana, so roughly 2,000 kilometers short.
going in. Removing all the elevator trim. And we're just going to pitch down and let the vessel settle into a natural 20 degree down pitch. And with the very least we'll skid across the top of the water before we sink and die. No point in putting down landing gear obviously. Actually, I take that back. The gear deployed. orbiter has uh, thinks that everything is the ground, so. <clears throat> at the very least, I can practice trying to flare at the right time. So, 20 degrees down pitch. Reflare. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Mm, a little rough. Should have flared a little more there at the end, but hardly matters. We're landing in the ocean. Okay. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. I doubt anyone stayed awake the whole time. If you did, hey, congratulations. I'm going to try this again another time. And hopefully we'll have more success. Until then, if you have any comments that you'd like to uh, leave, put them down in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.